Hey, 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 all you perfectionists. Welcome to Perfect Edition Comics. I'm your host, Perfect. And today, I'm going to try and answer this question. Why is this the one Wonder Woman book you should own? Let's do this thing. First things first, let's do a size comparison. Let's kick it off with a standard size hardcover and you can see that this is already a much larger magazine format. So this is an oversized hardcover, but it's even wider than a standard deluxe edition. Here is the Green Lantern deluxe edition. And you'll see that the width is just that little bit more, which makes this just a, a beautiful oversized hardcover. Let's take a look at the spine. This is just a awesome book design. I just love the font choice colors really pop the back of it's just beautiful gives you a short synopsis and also gives you just a flavor for the apocalyptic world that uh, Daniel Warren Johnson has created in this let's take a look under the dust jacket as I was saying this is a tale of the apocalypse and this inside cover design just really denotes that I love the scale the use of color just the sunset and the painting feel, yeah, it really just lays out the world and the desolation that's the backdrop to this awesome, awesome story. Just a great, great piece of art on the actual cover of the book. And the end pages, just the standard black, which I guess kind of goes with the end of the world theme. And then we've got this uh, beautiful, beautiful inside uh, page here. Just stunning use of color. As I was saying, the uh, story and art is by Daniel Warren Johnson, colors by Mike Spicer. It does say lettering by Russ Wooten, but I also know Daniel Warren Johnson does a lot of the lettering himself embedded in the art, which I'll cover in a little bit. And you've just got this awesome inside page and cover, kind of a red style on the side, and then we get into the story. So this is published by the sub-label of DC Black Label. And it is somewhat of an Elseworlds tale, which means it's not stuck and mired in the continuity of the normal DC universe. So if you've never read Wonder Woman, you know nothing kind of about her or about her long, long history, you can read this and get a lot out of it, no worries at all. Of course, if you are a Wonder Woman fan, then you'll get a few extra little tidbits of history and kind of things around family and other characters that'll make it even more rich for you. But really, this is a perfect jumping on point for new readers or old readers as well. Also, being an Elseworlds tale, there is nothing else you have to read. This is it, it's all in one. It's a collection of four individual larger magazine style comics put into this one oversized hardcover. As I mentioned, this is a story based on the apocalypse. So Wonder Woman wakes up and finds that she's kind of been out of it for something like centuries long, and she discovers that Earth has been reduced to this nuclear wasteland. Now she's stuck in this dark and dangerous future and she doesn't really know what's going on. She finds herself protecting the last human city from a whole bunch of monsters and she has to uncover what exactly is the secret, what has happened in this now dead earth. It's a real mix of science fiction and fantasy with this post-apocalyptic vision of Wonder Woman which is just so different from what I've seen before. This book has some of the most dynamic superhero fights you'll see. And what makes them really unique is the approach to lettering. It's really integrated into the scene and adds a layer of description that's hard to explain, but it makes the book a clear winner for me of lettering of the year. It's just stunning. The colors of Mike Spicer just add an amazing funkiness to the already awesome funky art of Daniel Warren Johnson. The gradient usage, the pinks, the blues, the yellows, it's just awesomely vibrant and really matches the art style of Warren Johnson. Talking about Daniel Warren Johnson, or DWJ as I'll now call him because I just can't say that name too many times, he really has a knack for scale and putting things in perspective and here with this huge monster you can see Wonder Woman in the foreground and this massive insane Akira style monster and it just gives you such a great sense of scale. Talking of monster design, I was really heavily reminded of uh, Mike Mignola and his whole Mignolaverse, BPRD, Hellboy. Yeah, this is up there with that style, right? Just insane, insane monster and character design. Awesome stuff. So in this spread again, you see the scale at hand, you kind of 
see the use of color to highlight things and, and really just a awesome art direction. I'm just going to hunt for one more example of the way that he draws environments because they always have such a great sense of scale which really puts you into the world in this book. It's this feeling of the desolation of the world and its vast emptiness in relation to the characters within it. It's this beautiful use of the rule of thirds and perspective in so many of his scenes as an artist that really make this such a phenomenal artistic work. From his funky lettering, the great dynamic line work, the chunky inks and brush style lines, it's the textures and the colors, just this more wild, feral looking version of Wonder Woman. And at the beginning of the story, we find Wonder Woman ripping the throats out of monsters in the most brutal fashion. And within these first few pages, this shows us this isn't your grandmother's Wonder Woman. Let's take a look at the extras quickly. We've got lots and lots of beautiful Daniel Warren Johnson covers in here, all the variants, uh, well actually all the covers from the originals and some of the variants. We've also got some sketchbook character designs which are really awesome to see. A whole bunch of kind of logo treatments as well, a bit of character design thrown in, yeah really neat stuff and then just a little bit about the uh, creators in the back as well. This is a heartfelt, gripping, standalone story with just gorgeous, mind-blowing art that's kind of reminiscent of dynamic manga mixed into Western art. Beautiful book design, oversized as I said. It's a magazine format put into a hardcover, so it's kind of a widescreen treatment similar to Harleen that came out from DC Black Label as well. I can't recommend this book enough. If there's one Wonder Woman comic you have to have, this is it. And if you want it in its ultimate format, then this hardcover is the way to go. This is a 10 out of 10 for me, must buy, you won't be sorry. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and all that YouTuber goodness. And remember, stay perfect. See ya.